Spellbreak Chapter 2, The Fracture, coming out today. Get into it and start playing the new mode, Dominion. But before we get started in the patch notes, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button on my YouTube, and you can see all my articles and things I talk about on YouTube at my website at chromasgaming.com. Now let's get into it. All right, let's dive right into the patch notes. So the first up is Dominion is their new five on five objective based mode. Here you'll be able to capture points, uh, three different points in the, in the map, different maps are, are going to be rotating. So you're not going to be playing on the same map. Dominion for me really was similar to the Guild Wars 2 style where you have three points in the field. You have to capture the points. You're going to have different things on the field to help you change up what's happening and, and hopefully increase your chances of winning as well. Um, so there'll be merchants to gear up where you go back to base. It's not really a base in this. Eh? You go back to the sky and then you come back down. You can see some of the gameplay on Twitch and through their VODs. Now going into it, there'll be a lot more stuff coming into Dominion. So as soon as it's released, I'm going to get right into it and get a video out. Kind of going through what I think of Dominion and uh, things like that. Um, so I keep going. They're also going to be uh, vaulting Clash. So Clash was their 9 on 9 type, type gameplay. Um, they're going to be vaulting that for the time being so that people can focus on Dominion. Next on the list is Leagues. To pair with Dominion, they're introducing a rank system or competitive system, which they're calling Leagues. And it's going to be seasonal, just like all the other leagues that are out there today. Uh, here you'll be able to showcase how good you are getting rising up through the leagues, uh, starting between the bronze all up to legendary. And once you get to a gold league, you actually have to pay the crowns you earn from the previous from playing in ranks in like the league system. You have to pay crowns to actually participate to move up ranking. So if you don't do good and you cost yourself, you know, three thousand crowns. You actually won't do, you know, won't be able to progress that tier um, because you didn't do well in that match. Now that there will be some tweaking and things that have to do over time because um, not all players get kills. You have to risk uh, KSing, how assists work, things like that. Uh, but overall, I think it's going to be an interesting concept. I like the idea. You have to pay something to play in the higher leagues. It prevents people from uh, smurfing essentially or even. Uh, just take, abusing a lower league when they should be in a higher uh, standard league in this, in this situation. At the end of each season, titles, badges, things like that will be rewarded. And, you know, things will happen as people get higher and higher in the leagues. And those top players will be shown off through this. Now, that being said, the ranked mode is only, or the leagues in this case, is only with Dominion. It's not with Battle Royale. It's only with Dominion. So we keep going here and chapter two, they're going to be also bringing out um, more things with story. They're going to be bringing out new new NPCs, new honor quests, uh, different things around the game. Different things will be affecting the gameplay in Battle Royale as well as Dominion. And hopefully we'll see some unique, more uniqueness in the in the gameplay as well. Uh, so it's definitely um, it's definitely something interesting. And I, I feel like it can really, uh, really hit there. Now, Chapter 2 is going to bring out a whole bunch of different things. It's going to give us more story. It's going to introduce us to new NPCs. And hopefully this is a starting point for their RPG or some type of uh, multiplayer game that's going to be uh, expanded and expanding this world that they've started with uh, into this. So this is going to be interesting to see, especially with uh, the, the release of Chapter 2. Now, the Battle Royale, they're changing up how the final circle before is completely random. Um, where you never knew where it was at unless you're running a specific uh, talent. Now they're changing it up to make it so that these final battle, this final circle is more of a, a fight instead of having, I, I want to say that instead of the final circle being like this um, guessing game on, on where to go. So that's going to be interesting to see. I don't expect many people to continue the Battle Royale uh, with Dominion coming out, but Dominion is only a 5 on 5 and people don't want to maybe jump into that when they don't have the time to actually finish the game. Now, this is interesting. Uh, resurrection is something that I think was needed, but I, have, I, I do fear that it might extend the game a little too long or have too many people within the final circle, meaning that this, sec this last circle, it's like a lot, of, a lot of players and there's just too much stuff happening at once. Um, I'm not sure what to think of it. Well, it's definitely going to be interesting. You do have to wait 
you know, 12 seconds to resurrect somebody that has fallen in the in the fight. Fallen meaning that they've actually were taken out, right? They're not in the game anymore. They can't be resurrected by just normal means um, when they're when they're a light bulb, right? Um, so in this case, they have to. This is a way to get to a new zone and then res your teammate that's been killed. Now, the downside of this is they have nothing. They have just a you know a common common gauntlet. Doesn't really give you a lot when bringing them back so it's definitely something interesting to when you get taken out early you can still come back in the game and your teammate can just get away and, and res you and inside the circle the neck like the first or second circle um so definitely an interesting concept uh we'll see how it plays out though now the gameplay and balance in the battle royale mode i do like the increased time to kill somebody with to exile somebody in this situation five seconds was too small you can be invisible while taking somebody out or resing somebody so increasing it to 6.5 seconds makes it harder to sneak sneakily exile somebody instead of just being able to go invisible and take them out immediately um, in there. Now they did reduce the ore time from 90 seconds to 60 seconds. I think this was a huge increase. I think this was needed. I think 90 seconds is way too long to get resurrected while you're in the middle of um, fighting. And now you can resurrect your teammates so you can get away from a fight that you can't win or if it's an unfair advantage for you, you can escape and go res your teammate by getting to the next circle. Um, the storm damage is still negatable. I don't think two is enough at the early age, uh, uh, early on. Now we'll see how it plays up. I know they're doubling it as it as it continues to go upwards. Um, I think the damage on the circle though needs to be like a hundred, like always there. It, you shouldn't be able to to uh, make a talent uh, and reduce the damage. I think that still applies. I did not see anywhere they, that they remove that, but I'm hoping that that doesn't um, go into the next update. But it definitely was needed. It was not, you could just ignore the circle, drink a potion, and you wouldn't be killed. So it was definitely, definitely ignorable. Um, even for the first, second, and in almost the third one. Now, the, all the modes, now they, this is a big thing. I think reducing the gravity is something that was huge. Uh, because a lot of times you'd be flying in the midair and you could just fall real fast. Um, unless you're predicting that they're going to drop where they're going to hit. Um, you wouldn't be able to maybe ha hit a snipe or hitting lightning. Um, so people could get away a lot easier and you wouldn't really have a chance to quote unquote hit them because they were falling too fast uh, due to the gravity and things like that. So this is going to be kind of interesting to see. Same thing with the wind surge no longer has the gravity reduction. So this is going to be very, very nice when people just jump up in the air thinking they're safe and they get sniped because they can't fall nearly as fast as they used to. Um, and again, we're increasing, uh, you know, the increasing spell sorceries and speeds and I think, but not for, you know, wind and lightning because there was already fast casting, but everything else got increased because they removed a talent that was uh, pretty much the main talent for most people were using fer uh, f uh, fervor, fer fer fervor, whatever. Now, speed up animation recovery from falling. Uh, from portal and response from one second to one from one three four seconds to one exact second so that should be interesting to see it's more responsive and so on and so forth the ruin changes again this was heavily needed i think this was uh you know being able the increased cooldown uh for feather fall teleport things like that the things that were able to escape fast um needed those reductions and making it harder to use them uh, because a lot of times people were using them to escape a fight that was not winnable for them, but they just could escape at will. And if you weren't running something to chase them, 90% of the time they got away full heal and come back into the fight. And if you didn't have any pots or anything like that, they, they essentially got away from a, a losing fight for really no reason besides the fact they had a ruin to escape that fight. Um... I'm not sure how I feel about it. I think it's necessary. I think this was needed. It makes it a little bit harder to get away from somebody, and, and especially if you in, you know engaged in a fight. Uh, we'll see how it plays out, though. My favorite thing is that Chrono Master cooldown was heavily needed. I'm a big fan of Chrono Master. If you had never used it or never understood what it was doing before, I highly recommend trying it. It's, uh, it's very neat. So that's definitely interesting. So this is definitely going to be a, a fun experiment to see how this uh, kind of plays out. Um, yep. So the potions now, the knowledge rate potions, I really preferred them to remove these. I thought they were not needed anymore. Uh, in this case situation, now knowledge pool takes three seconds versus one second. Okay, it's nice. 
Same thing with all the other potions. They reduce how long they take to consume because they really just took way too long to do it. So I'm really happy to, to see that uh, being done. Now talents for these uh, the talents that they're that they're increasing they're gonna be upgrading um, a lot of the points so now we kept seven total points versus six um, talents are gonna cost between one and four points before all the way up to three and you can choose on a whole bunch of different talents now I'm not gonna go through every little detail on the talents you can kind of go through my article at chromasgaming.com and in situations and you can read through of course the patch notes and kind of figure out which ones you want the most of. I think this is really nice. I think they did a lot of things here. Um, I definitely is going to be interesting to see what people choose to use, uh, especially between like battle rails talents versus dominion talents in this situation. Um, some of the favorite ones so far that I'm seeing here is really going to be a mixture of things between you know tough and fellowship and vigor. Even one of my favorites still today is amber dexterous um, because you can really do so much with a lot of these things. Um, it really depends on how you want to play it though. Uh, so there's a lot here. One of the, another favorite one of mine is Vampiric, giving you HP back when you do damage to the health bar, not to, spe not to the shield. Um, another one is Fortitude. You see a lot of people using this. It's going to be, um, they're making it a little bit, you know, a little better end game where you can block one spell every 20 seconds. I'm curious it, how this is going to play out. It is going to cost three instead of two. So there's them things that they're changing up, which is going to be really nice. Same thing with Foresight. So they've done a lot of different updates here, and I, I'm, I'm for one going to be very, very excited about it. Um, one of my favorite ones right now is Spell Singer, uh, Slinger. It's, um, you can store gauntlets and ruins inside your inventory. Now it takes up a potion section, but the upside here is that I can switch to another gauntlet at will. So I want to snipe. Now I'm going to do Lightning or Ice and then switch to Earth. In the middle of a fight, there is no delay. Now, I can't use a sorcery, but the sorcery has a 20% cooldown at max level, meaning if you have like a, if you have a legendary gauntlet, you have, you're getting this extra cooldown as well. Um, not Sorry, not the legendary gauntlet, but legendary gauntlet plus the, uh, the upgrades to this, to, to, to your mind talents, you're going to be able to get that 20% additional uh, cooldown reduction on top of the legendary cooldown that you're already receiving. And that's going to help a lot. And you can switch right into it and fight with a new weapon. And it kind of throws the opponent for a loop because they're expecting you have you have an ice gauntlet and a wind gauntlet and you just suddenly switch over to an earth or a fire. They're like, wait, what? You didn't have that a second ago and you can switch it at will. And that really is, a, I think for me, the person is actually really cool. And there's a lot more here, you know, Harden, Rebirth. Rebirth, again, one of my favorites. It sucks that Spell Slinger and Rebirth are on the same talent tree now. Um, but it, again, both is uh, one of my favorite skill sets that you can use uh, in any of the games. Now, classes and gauntlets kind of going into it. They've done a lot of changes between the gauntlets and making the damage more powerful, uh, buffing up each of uh, all of them. Again, what I was talking about, uh, sorceries, higher rarities, shorter cooldowns, which makes more sense because that wasn't uh, that wasn't there before. So they've done a lot here. They really increase some of the damage over time uh, over the different rarities of the gauntlet that you're using. Um, they're making the mana cost consistent, and they've now changed the cooldown reduction uh, based on the rarity of the gauntlet that you've done. So that's going to be very helpful. I think it's going to make one. It's going to want people to get that better, those better gear uh, gauntlets and things like that, especially for end game fights at the you know those last minutes um, or the last circle or the final points in Dominion. There's a lot of definitely definitely things here that's going to be kind of interesting. They are really working towards getting the combo set working better. Um, what that means is when you're comboing like fire and toxic or fire and lightning or something on like that, there's a lot of options here. And they really want that to be one of the primary things that people do because they want that damage to where something, you know, comboed is not doing enough damage. And that's really what they wanted to do. So I'm not going to go through every little detail. You can kind of read these at your leisure, um, but they definitely, I think they definitely hit this on the, on the head with the updates. And I'm looking forward to using fire and toxic myself.
Um, matchmaking will continue to work the way it does uh, today, where they're going to be supporting both Dominion and League. They're going to be matching people up to with, with the player skill and different numbers versus the ma the person's ranking in the system. Uh, right now, it was used with the ranking, which didn't really make sense. It doesn't really correlate to the person's skill level. So that's going to be interesting. And we're also going to be you're going to be seeing it a play screen instead of going into uh, like a pre match lobby where everybody was just trying to jumping around. Um, that's going to be interesting. New store, new cosmetics. Again, nothing too much. Uh, we're going to be doing some... Uh, the biggest thing, I, I this is like heavily needed. I was getting so annoyed when I clicked play and like, it would go back to my highest ranked like skill uh, gauntlet that I played. I'm like, oh, it's one of my previous gauntlet I was playing, not the one that's highest ranking. Um, and they added a whole bunch of different things here. So again, I'm not going to go through every little detail here. I think this is going to be self-explanatory for most people. Um, we have the new maps, we have updates for Nintendo Switch, PlayStation, Xbox, and performance updates, and a whole bunch of bugs fix that they found uh, that were in there. So if you haven't really uh, played Spellbreak, I really recommend jumping into the game. It's very fun. I think Dominion is going to be a nice little addition to the game. Uh, I think the leagues it was heavily needed, and I and, and really it's just going to bring home it's going to bring a whole new look at at the game. So again, if you haven't tried the game, I recommend playing. Hop on in. Get, get into the game. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And like always, take it easy.